Hello, boys and girls. It's so awesome to see you once again. This is a beautiful week that I've been really waiting for. Do you know why? It is VBS! Yes, we are going to have our VBS and we are going to learn together. Who can remember what the theme is? The fruit of the spirit. Yes, that's what we are going to learn this week. And we have so much lessons that we are going to learn together with fun activities. And our teachers have prepared for you and they are looking forward for you to come and learn together. So I just want to welcome you for this week. Each and every day we are going to learn together and I know we are going to have fun together. So I'd like us to pray so that we can start our week with our day one of VBS. Do you want to do something with me? Kindly stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Yes, now I want you to stretch your hands wide. Have you stretched them so wide? Yes, and now take them up slowly. Up slowly, 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 and touch them together. Then bring them down, 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 and where your heart is. And I want us to pray. Can we pray together? Yes. Lord, we thank you so much for this week, the week that we have been waiting for so that we can learn together. We pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to have the fruit of the Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, and in each and every day of our living. We thank you for our teachers who are going to teach us. God, we pray that you'll continue to give them uh, wisdom and continue to help them to teach us well. I we also want to thank you for all the children who are watching us today and learning together with us. We thank you because of your awesomeness and your love and your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome to our VBS. Hello everyone, I'm so glad that you could join us today for our Vacation Bible School, VBS. Our theme is the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. My name is Teacher Sam and I'm going to be taking you through the first two parts of the fruit of the Spirit. You are most welcome. And we will just dive into the deep end. So get ready, get excited, pull your Bible and your notebook, and we'll go through this together as God helps us. Let's explore from the Word of God, the Bible. Did you carry your Bible with you? I'm going to read with you a verse, and then I'm going to read for you some other verses. If you open the Bible in the book of Galatians, Chapter 5 and verse 22, Galatians is in the New Testament and it was written by Paul. Are you there now? It starts with the word but. So read with me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Then I'm going to read for you another one. This one you can just listen because of time. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. The Bible says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. I like that. Two commandments, they're like twins. They are like each other. To love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Love is a part of the fruit of the Spirit. It is the first part. There are many parts, but love is the first part. It's more than just a feeling. It's beyond a feeling. It's, it's an action. It's something you do to somebody 
that shows that you, you care and that you're concerned about them. When we love others, we do good things for them. We help them. We support them. We wish them well. We are happy when they succeed. And we don't manipulate them if we really love them. If we manipulate them, we are selfish. And nothing is farther from love than selfishness. So we are very much like Jesus when we love. So let's go back where we began. A very simple way to explain what the fruit of the Spirit is, is being like Jesus. So what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? What is it? It is being like Jesus. So when we love, thumbs together, stretch a little bit. When we love, when we love, we are very much like Jesus. Jesus is like love. Jesus is love. God is love. So when we love, we are very much like Jesus. So it's a part of the fruit of the Spirit. But it's not just a part of the fruit of the Spirit. It's also a command from God. What did Jesus say? There are two commandments. That sort of summarizes all the commandments that we know. So two, the twins. We are commanded to love one another. So it's not a suggestion. It's not an idea you could do or not. God doesn't give you a choice there. It's a command in capital letters and bold that we should love one another. But there is a twist there. I've heard of, sometimes I've said, I love rice and stew, bean stew. Is it really to love rice or is it to like rice? I think it's to like rice. Love has a slightly different meaning. So I ask myself, hmm, there are some people who are not quite likable. Uh -uh. And am I supposed to also love those ones? Let me give you an example. There was a guy seated at a gate one time when Jesus was walking and he was blind. He couldn't see a thing. And boy, that guy had stayed at that place for long. And he was poor. Perhaps his clothes were even tattered and maybe because he was poor, perhaps he never even had a shower in their house. So maybe he was also a little bit smelly. He was not likable, and boy, that guy could make noise, so he had Jesus coming. I started saying, Jesus, son of Nazareth, have, have, have m -m 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 mercy on me. And the guys who were around him, do you know who I'm talking about? He was called Blind Bartimaeus. The guys around him told him, shut up, keep quiet. The master is around. This is undignified of you to come and talk like that in front of him. The guy shouted even all the more. He was not likable. Not from his clothes, they were not likable. Not from his smell, he was not likable. His noise, he was not likable. But guess what? When Jesus came, he said, call that guy to me, call him. He not only came to him, but Jesus also actually healed him. And this guy was not likable at all. Now, there are people around you, there are people around me, who are not quite likable. They are like blind Bartimaeus. They are so ugly, they are dirty, they look like they have so much need, or they are bullies. They like hurting others. You don't come close to them. Even that one, God still tells you to love them. Now, you think blind Bartimaeus was unlikable? And you think we are okay ourselves? No, nothing is farther from the truth. He loved us when we were still unlikable. And so should you, and you and you do, and so should I do. When they are still unlikable, we should love them. Now, love comes from God. It's not something we manufacture and create within us. It comes from God, and it comes when the Spirit of God is in us. When the Spirit of God is in us, it's like Jesus multiplied in you. 
is Jesus multiplied in you. So there are many, many, many Jesus, Jesus, Jesus represented here, there, and there. So we are able to bear the fruit of the Spirit. So if somebody tells you tomorrow or another day, I love you so much. It's not bad to be loved or to be told that. It makes you feel nice, right? But what's most important is what do they end up doing after that? That's what shows what real love is. Are we together? Love, get your fingers together, the thumbs. Tighten them a little bit. Every time you do that, it reminds you of love and then this emphasizes it all the more a tight hug this is the first part of the fruit of the spirit and it's a big challenge for us you know why also as i said some people are not likable there are people who are not likable because of where they probably come from or you don't like the color of their skin they look this but your skin looks this other way or maybe you don't like their school or how they talk, we are still supposed to love them. Let's jump to the other side now, to the other part of the fruit of the Spirit. And this is joy. You can say that in your heart, say joy. This is a hard word to say when you're not smiling. At here I say uh, joy. It doesn't auger well, no. Joy with a big smile. Let me give you an idea for you to express joy. You have good hands like this? Do this. Then you do. Let's go out again, again. So when you want to remind yourself what joy is, you do. You smile from ear to ear and round and back. Joy. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, Philippians chapter, verse, this is what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Now when the Bible says something and then repeats itself, it means God is very serious about what he's saying. Rejoice in the Lord all the time. Again, I'll say rejoice. That is very interesting. I find it very, very interesting that the Bible can repeat itself. But there's a very interesting story in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8. And I'll just read one small part, verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, it says, Go and en enjoy choice food. This is sounding mouth-watering. And sweet drinks. Ooh. And send some to those who have nothing prepared. So as you think about yourselves, don't think only yourselves. Selves, think about others. This day is holy to our Lord. Don't grieve. Don't cry. Wipe your tears. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. I need to say that better. For the Joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, when Nehemiah said these words, you'd think it was party time? No. Things were thick. Jerusalem was in chaos. The war had been broken. People had been exiled. There was no food. There was no water. Things were really bad. And then this guy comes and says, it's party time? He couldn't be further from the truth. This is not looking good. But he says, yes, go ahead and have joy. Why? For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let's go a little bit deeper in the, in the word joy. Like we confuse love with liking, sometimes we confuse happiness with joy. I think they are a little bit different. Let's see that's more difference today somebody's birthday. Today is somebody's birthday. I believe somebody's birthday. Today is somebody who is celebrating their birthday today. So they get a cake, a big cake. If you ask me, my cake would have my favorite football team on it with color red. I'll tell you which team. 
But when I see it, what do I do? I am so excited. Now, that brings, brings me pleasure. And that brings me happiness. I am so happy. All right. But when I get the cake and take the knife and I start cutting it and I start parting away with the cake, actually giving others, now something happens in my heart. It is something like very satisfying. It is called joy. I have happiness when this whole cake is mine. I have joy, real joy, when I share it out. That's the difference between happiness and joy. And I think joy is deeper. Let's go for joy, not just happiness. But also Nehemiah is very strange. He talks about the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, when I think about strength, the word joy doesn't quite come very well, doesn't fit very well there. When I think about strength, I think about biceps and muscles and then it's, ooh, that's what I think of, strength. Or I think about a castle, majestic with big columns built on a strong rock. No, nobody can break into it. That is strength. Or I think about a four by four, an SUV. Ooh. I drive it at supersonic speed across any terrain. That to me is strength. Ah. Think about my fat wallet with dollars and dollars and more dollars. That is financial strength. I'm so strong. Oh, I think about my latest mobile, not phone, mobile device with all the capabilities. That to me sounds more like strength. But Nehemiah comes talks about joy, 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 joy. Aye. How is that? This is because Jeremiah, Nehemiah knew, sorry, Nehemiah knew that the, our real cause of satisfaction is not these things, it's not riches, it's not the things we have, because one to you, when they fade away, your happiness and your joy will also go back. When your joy is in God, it means you will re rejoice in any and every situation. Like the current situation we have of COVID-19. People have died, people have lost jobs, People have not gone to school. Perhaps you are at home now and you could be in school, but you're not in school because of COVID-19. Now, that probably can compare with how Jerusalem was. Is it a time to park and sit somewhere in our cold chairs and mourn? No. This is a time to still sing for our God. Don't hold that song. Don't wait until the season is over. Now is the time to release that song and sing to him because he is our strength, not our school, not our jobs. It is God who is our strength. So knowing we are secure in God, no matter what happens around us, that should be our cause of real, real joy. This lesson can be very big, but I want to conclude it. I want to say a few things. Consider yourself as a tree. Like we started by saying, what does God see in you? Is God seeing love? Okay. Is God seeing genuine care and concern for others? Is that what God is seeing? Or does he just see you seated there talking about me, mine, myself? Ah, is it all just about me, me, me? Or are you thinking about others? That is love. Does God see real joy in you? Or does he just see you seated there thinking only about, I don't have this, so-and-so have this, we don't have this, so sad about myself, I'm so sorry. Does God see you thinking sorry about yourself? Or does he see you rejoicing in him? Does he see real joy? Does he see real love in you? So two things I want you to remember. If you forget everything I have said today, two things. Number one, not everyone is likable, but everyone is lovable. Lock that in your heart. Not everyone is likable, but everyone is 
lovable. The second one, things around me may not bring me happiness. But the joy of knowing that I am accepted in God and that I am safe in Jesus keeps me going on and on and on and on regardless of anything else that's happening around. Are we still there? But perhaps you're feeling now low and you're thinking, oh God, I don't measure up. I'm nowhere near being loving or caring. I don't know real joy. Be encouraged. Do you know how long a fruit takes to grow and mature? Sometimes they go through dry seasons when there's no rain. There are pests that come. But with God, you know your fruit will grow. So your fruit could be this small now, but it is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. And if it's color red when it is mature, it will become color red like my jersey. Can I pray with you? Let's put our hands together and let's pray. Lord Jesus, help each one of us to remember that it takes time and patience to grow the fruit of the Spirit. Help us to depend on you. And we pray this in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now right behind me is our beautiful tree. And it's a very fruitful tree. Here, the fruit of the Spirit, part one, love. I'll put it right in the middle. Here it goes. It's an apple. I don't know how many people love apple as their favorite fruit. And then joy. I'll put it right next to love. Here it goes. And our tree is very fruitful. Throughout the week, it will keep bearing more and more fruit.